Hello, and thank you for joining me on another episode of The Average EV. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the charging curves of a 2023 ID4 rear wheel drive with the SKI battery on both a 350 kilowatt charger and a 150 kilowatt charger. Additionally, I'm actually going to show you a charge session from a 150 kilowatt charger that was not functioning properly, and I wanna see how big a difference it makes, how much time do you save when you charge on a 350 kilowatt charger versus the 150. Let's get into it. All right, again, we are checking out a charging curve of the 2023 ID4 rear wheel drive from Chattanooga with the SKI battery. And we're gonna be looking at three different charge sessions, one on a 350 kilowatt charger, one on a 150 kilowatt charger, and one on a 150 kilowatt charger that's not functioning at full capacity. And I wanna see how big a difference it makes which charger you use. Uh, sometimes you might come to a charge station and uh, 2020 ID3 uh, ID4 can use a 350 kilowatt charger and um, max out the speeds, but how big a deal is it really? So we're gonna take a look at that. Now, before we get into that, please remember to give a like and a subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can get all the up-to-date ID4 content and EV content that you can find here on the average EV. Let's get into it. So here it is. The upper left screen is the 350 kilowatt charger. The bottom left screen is the 150 kilowatt charger that worked properly. And then the upper right hand corner is the 150 kilowatt charger that was not working properly. And it, you can look at the stats, but at the end of the day, it kind of peaked at 100 kilowatts and then it follows the natural curve. Uh, and we're gonna kind of see how big a difference it makes. So here we go. All right. So again, all these charging uh, sessions started at um, 10% and they all go to 80. Uh, as you can see, as you would expect, the 350 kilowatt uh, charger is charging faster. We're two minutes in, almost three minutes in, and we're at 20%, while the failed charger is at 15%. So we're gonna watch it go up here and we're gonna get to the important milestone of 25%, which took the 2023 ID for four minutes. And eventually we're gonna see here, in the bottom left hand corner. Yes, it took about five minutes for uh, the 150 to reach there. So not that huge a difference. The next major um, milestone we're gonna get to is 50%. Again, with the ID4, I would probably pull at 50% and go to the next charger. And I think that's an important um, thing to pay attention to when we're looking at these different charging curves. Okay, yep, they're both starting to ramp down a little bit. We're getting close to 50% on the 350 kilowatt charger, but it's only leading by about 4% state of charge. So nothing too flashy there. Uh, the 100, uh, 150 kilowatt that failed is running about 10 to 11 12% at times behind the uh, 350 kilowatt charger. Now here we are at about 12 minutes, 13 minutes, and we reached that 50% state of charge for the 350 kilowatt charger. Now let's see how much longer it takes the 150 kilowatt charger. We're at 14 minutes and we're at about 15 minutes. So it only took two more minutes. So at the end of the day, even at the bottom of the pack, going from 10 to 50, it's not that big a difference to use a 350 versus a 150. So if you have to use 150 because the, the, the 350 kilowatt chargers are taken, it's really not that big a deal. So now we're gonna watch these um, videos play out to the end. Obviously, the 350 is gonna end first, but uh, I will tell you the 150 with the good charge session isn't gonna end that far behind. Notice too that the um, 150 with the fail chart, I'm calling it the fail charging session, is still lagging by, by about 11% um, as far as this race is going.
All right, we are at 75%. We're about to hit 80 with the 350 kilowatt charger. Um, the 150 with the good session is only a little bit behind. And as you can see, the um, session with the, uh, the failing session, I'm calling it, is still lagging by about 10%. So here it is, 29 minutes to, uh, for the 350 kilowatt charger to reach 80%, but only by a little bit behind, you're gonna see the uh, 150 kilowatt charger only takes about 31 minutes. Um, so is it that big a difference? No, not at all. Just like we said with 50%, um, if you have to use 150 over um, and you can't use the 350, not a big deal at all. Here, even with the failed session, riding 100 kilowatts and then following the natural curve for the rest of the way, it only ends up taking, you're gonna see it in about a, a second here, 35 minutes, 36 minutes. So uh, compared to the 350, it's only seven more minutes, which honestly at the end of the day isn't a huge deal. So if you happen to come across one of these 150 kilowatt stations that aren't working properly, it's honestly not the end of the world. Um, obviously, I think all stations should be working properly, um, but you're gonna come across stations that don't work, and if it's 100 kilowatts, the world's not gonna end, you're gonna be okay. But um, as I, maybe you saw my other video in regards to these specific EA chargers, and I'm sure it's other brands as well, if you have lower speeds than expected, but they're good enough, I would still report that as a failed session and at least report that problem to Electrify America or whoever else so that they can fix the issue. Now, let's take a look here at the charging curves. I put them in a nice graph for you. The uh, blue is the 350 kilowatt station. Yellow is the 150 working properly. And red is the uh, 150 but not working properly. So as you can see, the, um, the 350 has a huge advantage in the beginning, but when you get to about 35% the um, 350 and 150 meet and they follow the exact same curve, exact same curve all the way down. And then if you watch the red, it rides 100 until about 50-ish, 48, 50%, and then they all ride the same curve down. So it's nice to see consistency. Um, but again, at the end of the day, if you can get a 350, awesome. If you get stuck with a 150, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. And if you get uh, uh, one of these non-functioning ones, also not the end of the world. But if you're going on a really long trip, eight minutes, if say you have 14 stops, eight minutes times 14, you're looking at almost an extra hour to two hours um, of charging that you, know, you didn't have to have if you use a slower charger. So uh, it might be worth try another station if you can, or if you're stuck with it, again, the world won't end, but um, try and find a functioning one if possible. So again, that's all I kind of want to show you all with this. Um, I think it's kind of important because a lot of us kind of get in our heads, we have to use the 350, and really, you don't. Um, there's not that big a difference, especially when this car only charges, you know, 60 kilowatts more, and then it and that's only for a short period of time. And then it's about the same curve as you all saw uh, as the 150 kilowatt charger. Now, if you have a faster charging car, like the Ionic, the five, the Taycan, stuff like that, and you're usually 220, but now you're riding at 100, well, that's gonna make a huge difference. But for the Ionic, uh, sorry, for the ID4 and other 400 volts, I just don't think it's that big a difference if you're using 150 over 350. And also if the charger's not fully working, you, you'll probably be okay, but obviously it's gonna be a little bit of an inconvenience. Again, thank you for watching. Please let me know any other content you all wanna see, charging curves, range chests, drop it in the comments. I will uh, add it to my list and do them. I love to bring you all content you all wanna watch. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all next time.